What is up, YouTube? Today, we're going to talk about how we hear blood pressure in order to take blood pressure. Many of you have been asking about how you take blood pressure. What are some of the things you need to work in the medical field, taking vital signs, and blood pressure is one of them. Or maybe you just want to learn how to take blood pressure yourself. For those of you who have come here with me today, welcome. My name is Carla here at Teaching Trends, teaching you all those trending skills that you need in healthcare, remote jobs, work from home, and of course, the skills needed here on YouTube. For those of you who have come back, welcome back. And for those of you who are joining me new today, welcome. It is great to have you here. Today, we're going to talk about how you can actually do blood pressure. You may have or know someone who has high blood pressure, or maybe you work in the medical field, or you're in school, and you're having a hard time with blood pressure. So I decided to make a video on blood pressure. So what you just heard was what you should be listening to when we're taking blood pressure. But first, we need to talk a little bit about what blood pressure is. So blood pressure is measured with a blood pressure cuff also known as a sphygmomanometer. It is something that measures the pressure of the arteries in the body when under pressure and when the vessels are relaxed. So we are placing this blood pressure cuff or sphygmomanometer on the patient's arm and we're pumping it up. Or you could be using this for yourself and learning how to take your own blood pressure. So when we put this blood pressure cuff on our arm, we are pumping up the blood pressure cuff and we are listening for what is called those carotid cough sounds. There's different types of blood pressure cuffs. We have our manual cuff. We have how you should position the patient's arm. We also have our digital cuffs and we have ones that we've seen at the doctor's office. What we're going to be focusing on is this manual cuff that we see here in our photo. So where you kind of pump up the cuff yourself and then you use the stethoscope and you listen for the carotid cough sounds. I'm going to play a short, small demo of how you place the blood pressure cuff on the arm. And then we're going to learn how we actually listen and get the right accurate number for blood pressure. Manual or aneroid equipment includes a cuff, an attached pump, a stethoscope, and a gauge. This equipment requires coordination. It's difficult to use if you're hearing or visually impaired, or if you're unable to perform the hand movements needed to squeeze the bulb and inflate the cuff. When you're ready to take your blood pressure, sit quietly for three to five minutes beforehand. To begin, place the cuff on your bare upper arm one inch above the bend of your elbow. Pull the end of the cuff so that it's evenly tight around your arm. You should place it tight enough so that you can only slip two fingertips under the top edge of the cuff. You want to be sure that you're not putting the cuff on too tight or you're putting the cuff on too loose because you won't get an accurate reading. Make sure your skin doesn't pinch when the cuff inflates. Once the cuff is on, place the disc of the stethoscope face down under the cuff, just to the inner side of your upper arm. Next, place the stethoscope earpieces in your ears, with the earpieces facing forward, pointing toward the tip of your nose. Rest the gauge in the open palm of the hand of your cuffed arm, so that you can clearly see it. Then, squeeze the pump rapidly with your opposite hand until the gauge reads 30 points above your usual systolic pressure. Stop squeezing. Turn the knob on the pump toward you to let the air out slowly. Let the pressure fall 2 millimeters or lines on the dial per second while listening for your heart sounds. Note the reading when you first hear a heartbeat. This is your systolic pressure. Note when you no longer hear the beating sounds. This is your diastolic pressure. 
rest quietly and wait about one to two minutes before taking another measurement. This is really important because when you start hearing the first sound, that is your top number. When you no longer hear the sound, that is your bottom number. You want to be really accurate. You're going to be letting the air out slowly, as they said, little by little. If you let the air out too fast, you will not be able to determine or write down your actual number. Record your numbers either by writing the information down or by entering the information into an electronic personal health record. If you're interested in more videos like this, um, this was from the Mayo Clinic in regards to how to take your blood pressure. So I will make sure I put that link down in the description. So as the video mentioned, you have a top number, which is the systolic pressure. And then you have the bottom number, which is the diastolic pressure. So that highest point of pressure is systolic, the top number, and the bottom number, diastolic. So the first sound you hear, top number. When you no longer hear the sound, bottom number. So we're going to practice and we're going to see how you do at determining blood pressure and see if you can get this right. So remember, this is going to pump up. You are going to pay attention to when you hear the first sound, that is your top number. When you no longer hear the sound, that is your bottom number. In case you missed it, I'm going to replay it. Did you notice you started hearing that sound around 160? Good. Now let's see if you can see when the sound stops. Stopped hearing the sound around 90. So if we start hearing that sound at 160 and stop hearing that bottom sound over 90, our blood pressure is 160 over 90. So let's check our blood pressure and see what we get. We are correct. So let's do another one. Let's do one more and see how we do in our blood pressure. Remember, we're going to be listening to the top number or the top sound. And then when we no longer hear the sound, that is the bottom number.
If you said that one was about 160 over 92, you are correct. Let's do one more of these blood pressure readings. Remember, when we hear the top number, we hear the first sound top number and we no longer hear the sound bottom number. That one's quite low, so I'm going to play it again. Let's see what we get for this one. I got something that was quite low for this one. Stopped hearing that sound at about 50. Started hearing that sound at around 80, which is kind of low for blood pressure. And that is correct, 80 over 50. So for those of you who are looking to learn a little bit about blood pressure, head on over to practicalclinicalskills.com. They have some skills that you can learn on your own about the blood pressure cuff and sphygmomanometer and really hearing those carotid cough sounds using your stethoscope. If you like this skill and skills like this and want more practice, please feel free to let me know in the comments. My name is Carla from Teaching Trends. With that being said, everyone today, take care.